guys, Young 40 Mom, um, coming at you with another Tool Time Tag, Tool Time Tag, Tool Tag Tuesday, <laughs> Tool Tag Tuesday, Tag Tutorial Tuesday, it is a tag day, um, I'm trying to figure out how to, I finally got my bigger uh, card so that I can do more um, tutorials, um, I still have to do my crocheted heart. Um, I know everybody's talked about doing some specialty stitches and, um, I got some, I took advantage of the bookmark sale from 123 Stitch. Um, but I got, let me show you, um, I got some birthday mail. Ah, cause this month's my birthday. I'm so excited I got these from, uh, from Sarah. She's awesome. Um, I made a wish list on 123 Stitch cause you know, I'm not working. So, um, I found when the the bookmark books came on sale, I went ahead and took advantage of that, and I think I got them for like four or five dollars each, something like that. Cause you know I'm a bargain shopper. I'm all about nah, I don't pay full price for nothing. I can't afford to right now. But um, I think on my last week's video, I showed you guys um, what uh, Brenda had sent me, which was awesome and amazing, and and I'm still in shock, and I'm already getting crazy ideas. I'm created a couple of. Uh, uh, silhouette patterns that I can use those awesome um, hand dyed silks or hand dyed flosses on which is really cool but anyway so right after I did the video and posted it I got new uh, happy birthday mail so awesome um, and my daughter's already trying to figure out where we're gonna put them <laughs> um, oh, excuse the hair I'm looking over in the camera viewfinder I let it dry natural and it's kind of frizzing up a little bit um, can't see the gray as much when I wear it down. See? See? I covered it. <laughs> but anyway. Um, okay, so I got, uh, my first Nora Corbett. So awesome. So now it's, it's on, not on my, my to dream list. Um, I just got to figure out how to get the, it calls for crescent colored hand dyed flosses, mill hill beads, and some krennic. So, and, uh. Model stitched on 32 count water lily linen. I've never worked on linen. Um, I, I don't know. I know when I do this, it's going to be permanent because there's one for me and one for my daughter. And it is Letters from Mermaids by Nora Corbett. And here is the, the letter A. Ah, oh, isn't that so cool? Um, I can dream. I'm, I'm, I can't afford to, to pack these up and stitch them yet, but, um, cause I want to do them right. If I'm going to do them, these are, these are for me and Maddie and these are going to be on my wall forever. So I want to make sure when I do them, I do them right. Um, but I'm really tickled, uh, that she sent these to me. So amazing. The other one is M for, for is another letters from, uh, from mermaids and there's an M for Matson. Isn't that beautiful? got all kinds of beads and so yeah so Maddie's already deciding where we're gonna put them <laughs> um and I'm mine's got a little bit more more intricate detail on it but it's so beautiful um yeah so I can't wait to get started on this but that's birthday mail isn't that awesome um and I also went back to Heaven and Earth Designs and um, I showed you guys last week the the two New Age cross stitch uh, sets that I got. Let's see, this was spring 2014. This was issue number one. That's what I showed you last week. And then I also got the autumn 2014 issue number three. Um, I've got the, it give, they give you a thank you card. It also comes with, um, coupon codes, but they're expired because they were from 2014. <coughs> so, excuse me. So I went back and these were only $3.95. Um, and then I paid the extra $2 to have a hard copy because I don't work with the digital patterns. And the computer I have is so old and decrepit. Um, I'm so afraid because it was one that someone had given to me to substitute because my computer got fried from uh, lightning striking the cable in the house. It took a lot of things out. Um, I lost some very precious memories um, 
photographs and videos of my daughter when she was younger. Um, luckily they were on an external hard drive. I haven't taken them to um, someone for obvious reasons to have it extracted. But anyway, so that's why well, I'm kind of leery with digital copies of anything. Um, if I do digital copy, I do put it on a thumb drive. Um, I do have um, a larger external hard drive that I do disconnect every time I get through using it. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. But anyway, um, so I went back and that was number one and number three, issue one and three. And I went back and got issue two and four. And issue two is uh, summer 2014. Again, they have coupon codes inside, but you can't use them because they're expired. But, um, it's exclusive chart designs. You've got color cascade fabrics and designs, heaven and earth designs, love thy thread, pain free crafts, and tilt and crafts. And we've got, yeah, so this is what I got. So you get six patterns. And you can't beat that. Oh, there's a glare on the cat, but I think I've seen the cat before. And then... Isn't that cool? Those are so nice. I don't know if I'll do them all. I like this one. I think I might do that one. And then I love this one because you can add all kinds of neat colors to that one. Because it's just a black and white with outline. So that one was number issue number two. So now that's one, two, three that I've got. And I went ahead and got number four. And it was winter 2014 to 2015. Which means... Um, they may end up, it says it's exclusive. Um, it does have a coupon code inside it as well, but it expired in March, so I missed out on that one. But, um, yeah, if they keep doing this, I might keep getting these. Um, this one has five. It's got a ragdoll rabbit, a tree owl, a winter rose, um, a QS Sandra, S-A-N-U-R-A, -A, and Will Thou Be Mine? Yeah, I'll show you that one. Let's see, oh, there's a glare. Sorry, that the windows, the sun's coming in. You know what? Let me see if I can get that page out. So that's oh, the glare's getting bad. Um, and when they do send you a printout, it comes on really good um, quality paper. It's not cardstock, and it's not regular paper. It's a thicker paper. It's really nice. Okay, so. There's the ragdoll rabbit, and then there's the owl, and there's the winter rose, and then there's the cat. It's that it reminds me of a Cheshire cat. So cool. But anyway, so there's that. That that's number four. I expect they'll be coming out with a summer one. Um, Depending on how those do in their sales, I'm sure. But those are the only four that they have on their website. Let's see. Spring 2014 is one. Summer 2014 is two. Autumn 2014 is three. And then we have winter 14, 15, 2014 and 15 is number four. So I, I got all four of those. So that's my heaven and earth stash. Um, I'm going to do the uh, tool time tag. Um, I started it. To, I wanted to make sure that I got everything in there. Um, let me put this away. All right. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do Pam Reed's stitching style tag. And then that way... I think that's it as far as any kind of haul or um i want to give a whip update but i'm going to wait on that i did start the river street um savannah georgia river street if you follow me on instagram um i did post a picture the other day i did one of the houses on the road and i've done another house since then i also have started um a project for my stepdad i don't think he watches my videos but um, I'm going to wait on that one as well. Um, it is nine pages, um, but three of them are partial pages, but, um, I did it in a black and white theme. And when you guys see this, it's, it's going to, it's going to be pretty amazing. Um, I tried it in like four different styles and three different programs that I have. And this one turned out really good. So I'm impressed with the way this is going to turn out. I already started it. Um, I'm halfway through one of the pages. I've got a ways to go, but... 
I'm doing it on 18 count um, a cream Ada because it is going to be a solid piece. But anyway, okay, so Pam Reed stitching style tag. Number one, favorite fabric. I don't have one. Um, <laughs> I have mostly always stitched on Ada. I am starting to work on um, even weave. Oh, by the way, thank you, Sarah. Of course, I already gave her thank yous anyway. Um, I, I showed you guys where I got this, the even weave, and um, Annie said that this is what she works with as well. So I'm going to give it a try. This is a 28 count. Um, I have worked on 22 count hard anger, um, but my eyes, I think, as I'm getting older, are not as they used to be, and I'm nearsighted. So. I'm not really sure what my favorite fabric is. Um, I know I detest 11 count Ada because that is what I decided to do my, uh, uh, where are you at? There it is. Um, I decided to do my Noah sub on. The reason behind that was because I have a, a bolt. If you guys have seen my stash videos, I have bolts of, um, three different fabrics. Um, I have a bolt of 14 count light gray Ada, um, cream 11 count Ada and a bolt of 22 count I say Ada but it's really a, more of a hard anger um but anyway so that's mainly what I've been working with um stash wise I'm hoping that I'll like the linen or the, I mean the rather the even we we shall see um Ada is mostly what I've always gone to but um I have been encouraged to try the other, um, I have some in my stash now, thanks to, um, um, Sarah's other lovely gift and the lady from the bank, but I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see. Um, number two, Hooper frame. Um, I have a scroll frame. I've never really worked with it. Um, I always found it awkward because I was so used to using hoops. I prefer a Q-snap now over everything because I love the tension on it. Um, Michael's brand, the side pieces, the little clamping bars seem to crack a lot, but um, of course now you guys know being on a budget is, is what I can do. So that's what I do. Uh, number three, do you use a stand or just hold your frame? Right now I hold, I have a stand, I have a lap stand, and I have a floor stand. Um, the floor stand I am finding does not, isn't, is not as reliable because it, it tends to not be able to hold the cue snaps very well and the weight of whatever I have put in there for larger projects. Because if it's a small project, I do it in my hand. Um, if it's a larger project, I was trying to do it with the frame, with the, the, um, the floor stand. Um, it seemed to have gotten too heavy, um, which was a pain in the rear end. So I was constantly adjusting it. And so that I decided to, in hand, in hand, and I will hold it. Um, what is your favorite time to stitch? Any time? Um, I prefer to do it during my daughter's reading time or if she's playing her video games, which we're limiting now. Long story. You don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> so, during her bad time of reading time, or right now since I'm not working, um, after I do my job searching, or go on my interviews or whatever, want to get back home, in between. So I say whenever Maddie's occupied, um, that's my favorite time to stitch, usually late at night. Um, unfortunately time gets away from me and next thing I know it's in the middle of the night and <laughs> I gotta get up and so, uh, and I'm rambling and I apologize. I'm just, it's, it's been a very unusual day. I'm fighting with the bank. You don't want to know. Uh, number five, do you use a printed paper copy of your chart or a digital? I do the printed copy. Um, I find it easier because when I say, for instance, I'm working on, say, this one, uh, and I've got my frame, um, I don't two-hand stitch. I'm trying to learn. It's still uncomfortable for me, but what I'll do is, um, say, for instance, I'll take, 
I can show you this pattern because I made it, so I don't have to worry about copyrights. Nobody's going to want to print a picture of my daughter anyway. Um, so there. So what I'll do is I'll take it. If it's a piece of a um, a chart, I'll fold it and manipulate it, and so I make a working copy, and I'll hold it like this with my thumb, or I'll hold it like this with my hand, and I stitch, and that's how I do it. Um, I go in, out, in, out. So I mean, usually I do it with the smaller frames, but um, my hand, my eyes divert between the working copy and my my hands here, so I'll go back and forth. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I do the um, the working let me put that back, the working printed copy. There I go. Uh, are you a floss licker? Yes. <laughs> I think I've answered this one before. Um, I learned how to sew before I could cross stitch. So I was always taught you lick your thread when you're sticking it in the sewing needle in the, the because. When you're threading a sewing machine, unless you you use one of those long, real skinny um, wire threaders, it, you lick it and stick it. So that's what I lick it and stick it. That's that's what I do. Um, I do use, um, and I'll show you this in my tool tool tag. I've used one of these for. Oh gosh, I want to say at least 10 years, maybe longer. Um, I have several of these around my house that I keep track of. But um, only when there's two or more threads. If it's just one thread and I'm threading it, I'll, just, I'll look it and stick it. Um, depending on the eye of the needle, how big the eye of the needle is. Otherwise, I'll use my threader. Um, I definitely use my threader and do not lick when I'm doing... Uh, crochet projects when I'm stitching together like my cupcakes or my uh, bears or whatever. Number seven, do you hoard or buy supplies as needed? <sighs> I buy supplies as needed now. I used to be a hoarder. Um, anytime there was a sale, if I had $20 in my pocket, I got $20 worth of whatever was on sale. Um, like my uh, cotton yarn when it was 97 cents I bought 20 skeins I stocked up um, when there were a couple places when our hand caught fabrics in town went out of business I stocked up on hand towels crochet I mean cross stitch hand towels and um, little um, cups I think I told you about the cups before um, to personalize the mugs. Um, I stocked it then. I have never, st oh, I like, like this right here. I didn't need the fabric, but I got it because it was only $1.79. You can't pass that up. If they had more than three, I'd have gotten $20 worth. Uh, <laughs> if it's on clearance, I'll look and I'll stock up. Um, so I used to be a hoarder and I have hoarding tendencies. Um, I am not now, um, but I used to be, so we'll leave it at that. Number eight, what is your favorite floss? Um, right now all I've ever used is DMC. Now that I have those Moe's sales, um, I'm going to try that. And then I have some Weeks Dye Works that, um, Sarah gifted me for the, um, Storytime sampler. I have not used them yet, um, but I do right now. It, it's just DMC. That's that's all I've ever really used. Um, number nine. Are you a serial starter or do you have a whip at a time? Um, I usually never have more than three or four whips at a time because I once I start something, I like to see the progress and I get excited and I don't want to stop, so I keep going until Stitch Mania. I now have about forty. I did one every day, so I had 31. I finished six of them, but I already had four or five whips going, and then I've just recently added two more, three more. So I've got around roughly around 40 uh, whips right now, but I am not a serial starter by nature because it bugs me. Um, number 10, do you have more FFOs or UFOs? I, uh, since I've been doing this so many years, I've got more FFOs. They're not in my house. I think I have maybe 
five or six projects in my house. I've given the rest away and I've done at least a hundred. Um, I have finished objects, but not fully finished objects. I have a box as I do them in my closet um, for that occasion when I finally do get the time to um, make wall hangings or pillows or bookmarks or whatever I'm going to do with them. Number 11, do you watch TV while stitching? The only time I watch TV while stitching is I have the TV or YouTube going during my stitching, but it's usually something that I've either something I've watched before so I don't have to look up because otherwise I'm very distracted and I will focus on whatever the movie or the TV show is. So I make sure it's something I've seen before unless it's floss tube. Floss tube, I'll go ahead and I'll stitch while floss tube is on, uh, but only if I have my tablet because I have to have my glasses off so I can see up close when I'm stitching. Um, and I can't, the TV looks like a blur. So if it's floss tube, I'll have my tablet on my easel stand next to me on the arm of the couch um, or I'll have it sitting next to me on my desk by my computer and then my flossing is in front of me here um, and then what I'll do is I'll I'll glance up when people like showing their projects or they're showing a technique or something like that I'll glance up so that I can see what they're doing and then I go back to stitching um, but yeah I, I very rarely have music going it's always the TV um, no matter where I'm stitching number 12 do you mostly stitch alone or do you ever get together with someone to stitch I mostly stitch alone um, I feel like I'm stitching with you guys when I have you on the floss tube it's like oh there's so-and-so yay okay um, and, and I know you can't hear me or see me when I'm doing it but I talk to you <laughs> uh, like I'm doing now because you're right in front of me. I see you. I see you and you're with me and yeah. And it's really funny because when I film and this was going this is what I was going to tell anybody who is new to floss tube and is still trying to get comfortable with it or isn't comfortable with it or feels like they're talking to themselves. What I imagine is I'm looking at you guys. I'm looking at you. I'm talking to you. I, I have mentally images of all your faces whether it be from Facebook or floss tube mostly floss tube because I'm a visual type of person um, and I'm looking at you when I'm talking to the camera it, that's who I see I don't see my lens I don't see um, the things around me I see you guys are sitting right in front of me and you're you're listening and you're talking back well I don't hear you talking back to me because that's crazy and we know I'm not crazy. Uh, anyway, let's go on to the next question. Number 13, do you like to experiment and alter things with your charts or do you stitch them just as written? Uh, everybody knows Coffee Stitcher is notorious for this. Um, and then uh, Letitia um, changed around her... Um, I can't think of the name of the pattern, but it, it's like, it's a cross between Dorothy Dandridge and, um, um, I don't know, Lady Thinks the Blues, I don't know, she changed the color of the skin, and it just turned out beautiful, I'm, I'm so impressed. I very rarely will alternate a pattern. I might add, um, a back stitch or two if I think it needs more definition to pop out, but as far as well and and if I'm short a color but I know I've got another color that's similar to the one they're calling for that will match it I'll do that but as far as like purposely altering any kind of pattern I usually don't um yeah but anyway um number 14 do you bobbinate floss or not I do bobbinate um with the Savannah River Street kit um it came with all the flosses inside so because it's older um well i will i did not bobbinate those um because i probably will not use those flosses again after i have completed the street um like i said because it's old and dmc is known for color schemes 
I will probably crochet a mini bag with what's left of that. But I do bobbinate. Um, and I, I guess I showed you guys um, the containers that I got. I um, got some more of those. But I've just got, I'm so, I'm a creature of habit. And I've been doing it for so many years that that's just the way it's. Um, I even, I will bobbinate DMC. We'll just leave it at that. Anything else so far, I have not. Um, I have just kept in bags. Number 15, do you start a project in the middle of your fabric or at the corner? I've always started in the middle. I am learning to start in the corner. Um, I feel safe in the middle. And normally what I will do is if I want to work in the corner of a project, I will still start in the middle. But what I'll do is I'll start... Say, for instance, on this one, say this is the middle. I'll start in the middle and count where my middle is supposed to be, and I'll count up and then over to find my corner. But I always end up starting from the middle. Um, sometimes I'll go ahead and put a stitch or two and work like a row of stitches up and then over to find my corner. Um, it just so happens I cut this fabric. I knew I cut this fabric a little bit bigger than um, what I needed. So I knew I could start in any corner and it would be okay. I wouldn't have to worry about it um, running out. But I think that's my biggest fear is worried about not having enough fabric. So I will always start in the middle. Um, of course, now I haven't done any of the heaven and earth designs yet. Even though I haven't done heaven and earth designs yet, I have done full page um, patterns like the heaven and earth designs where everything's completely covered like my the portraits that I've done in the past um, again I still start in the middle and I work my way over um, okay uh, 16 do you have a whip rotation I do not I, whatever fancies me is what I stitch on um, something will catch my eye and I'll go stitch on it for a while and I'll be like, oh shoot, I need to go back to this other one and I'll go back to the other one. And, um, I usually will work on between, between two and four at a time. Um, but I do not have a s scheduled rotation because I never know what I'm going to do from one day to the next. Number 17, do you use a timekeeper to keep track of how long it takes you to complete a project? I do not. Um, I roughly will s know when I start something, but I don't really keep track of it because I do switch back and forth so much. Um, like roughly I know something's taken me a couple months, or but I never really, I don't actually keep track of how long it takes me to work on a project how long it keeps it takes me to complete um unless i'm working on something steady then i can kind of keep i'll keep track then but for the most part i don't number 18 do you use the parking technique i do not um i haven't gotten the notion to try it yet but since i'm working on uh, my stepdad's portrait I, i'm seriously thinking about trying it with this um, I believe you need to do the two-handed stitching to do the portraits. I mean, to do the parking technique. I have not mastered that yet. So, I have not, ma I haven't, um, I kind of attempted the parking technique, but I haven't, it, it, that's all relevant, irrelevant to me. It's all new to me, so I haven't really tried it yet. I have watched the videos and thought, maybe, but I'm kind of OCD, so I don't, I don't know if I could, I don't know. <laughs> All those threads. I don't. I don't know if I can handle that. Uh, Nineteen. Do you keep your orts? Yes, until I'm ready to throw them away. Um, I'm the kind of person will uh, again bargainer. I will stretch that thread as far as it will possibly go till I can squeeze one more stitch out of that needle. I'll run it through the back and clip it, and my orts are maybe maybe that big by the time I get done. So, yeah, I have this little tiny little jar that I keep all my little orts in, um, and I will dump it about once a month because that's about half full it'll get about once a month. Um, don't cringe. I, yes, I don't keep them. I don't see the point. They're trash to me. I just don't see the point. Um, now when I start working with more silks and specialty threads and cranics and things like that, maybe, but I really doubt it. 
All right, number 20. Do you like to have a snack or a drink while stitching? I do not like to have a snack because I'm always afraid I'm going to get oil or crumbs or salt or color of some kind on my project. But I do have a drink. Um, I think I've mentioned this before. I will usually have my drink on one side of me and all my stuff to stitch with on the other side of me. So um, I have to have something to drink at all times. But if it ever gets knocked over, it's nowhere near my project. Um, so that it will fall somewhere else. Um, or I'll have something that's got a lid on it that's safety lid, but for the most part, that's it. So that's my tag. That's my little tiny haul. And I'm going to be right back with the tool time tag. Um, which I filmed previously, but I'm going to post it after this one because I'm because the computer's so old and the camera's more updated, I'm having to use Floss Tube, YouTube's video editor, to piece everything together. Um, still trying to get used to it. So, I'm doing this one now. I'm going to add all that to the end. Um, and that's a pain in the butt. But anyway, so I'm going to say goodbye now. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend, or a great wait, it's Tuesday, so it's not a weekend. Uh, <laughs> I've got two more resumes to put in online. Um, update on the job real quick. Um, I, I'm still up for, there were four positions I was up for. Um, one of them, they went another way and decided not to go through the, um, temp to perm agency. And the dream job that I was up for is still up, but she hasn't heard anything as of yesterday. So she said just to let her know when I'm unavailable, but she's going to go ahead and keep pushing for me to get that job. Um, the government position that I was up for, they're waiting to say I'm apparently plan B. They were waiting to see if, um, she was going to work out or not. And apparently I'm the backup if she doesn't. I really want that one because that, that's a permanent position forever. Great benefits, um, retirement plan, holidays. I mean, it was just, it's, it's the perfect job for me. It doesn't pay quite as much as the dream job, but it's security. Um, I, I wouldn't have to worry about anything. And the other position that I'm up for, um, again, apparently I'm a backup plan. Um, this, there's a girl that's about to join the Air Force and she's got two more months before she leaves. But, um, I've got about, uh, nine more weeks before my unemployment runs out and I start freaking out and end up going to work, um, someplace I really don't want to, but I'm still pushing for those, those jobs that I am made to work. So, y'all just, uh say a prayer for me that uh, something turns up so I'm still pushing on um I'm still I'm fighting with my bank right now because somebody got a hold of my um, debit card number uh it was canceled on the 31st of June all these weird yahoo charges were going to start coming out and the bank caught it and called me uh so we canceled the debit card and they issued a new one and then this morning I ended up having to call the bank because they net let another charge slip through on that card we canceled on the 7th of August. And I asked them, I said, I just don't get it. How is it possible that you guys let this go through when the card was canceled? I mean, wouldn't that raise a red flag? Wouldn't? Why did you even let it go through? So I'm getting all that back. But still, in the meantime, you know, with me being unemployed and on unemployment and, and a budget, that's just not acceptable. I, I'm not happy with this bank. I am going to, I'm not going to tell you what bank it is, um, because I don't want, you know, liabilities and all that good stuff, but I'm not happy. I will be switching banks, um, as soon as I start working. Um, even though they are getting my money back and the case, they're working on the case and like, they're really great people. They're really sweet. Um, I like them all. I've never had a problem with the people personally. I do not like the banking system itself. It, it's not the first time this has happened. Um, it also happened to my um, ex-mother-in-law. Same exact thing, only it was her credit card, not her debit card. Um, 
but anyway so now you know what happened with the bank what happens with what's going on with the job um, I am fixing to do um, Joanne B's tool time tag and that is your five favorite tools um, so yeah, so I will see you guys. Some great books are coming up. Um, and I did a disclaimer and I talked to, or I messaged, uh, back and forth with Carolyn. Um, I did the same exact, um, book that Carolyn did last week. I, we, I did them on the, we did it on the same day, which is so weird, but I wasn't going to post it till tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and post it tomorrow. We talked about it. Um, different points of view, uh, same book. So, um, I've done some, um, some great, uh, book reviews coming up on, uh, another purchase that I made as well called Twisted Stitches. You're going to love that one. That one's, that one's interesting. Uh, but anyway, so that's it. And, um, uh, sit back and enjoy the, uh, tool time tag. <laughs> and also, oh, Sherry Burke. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that for next week. Um, one of Sherry's videos, I think time before last or maybe it was the last video she did she had two questions on hers she did not publicly post it in her description but if you watched it she did add it um and it was a uh she's calling it the floss tube tag i believe that's what she's calling it but anyway i'm going to add because there's only two questions i'm going to do that one with next week's so, that being said, that's it. <clears throat> I'm getting sick again. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> anyway, that's it, guys. Peace out. Hey, guys. It's Young 40 Mom coming back at you for Tool Time Tuesday. And today I'm going to be doing Joanne B's Tool Time Tag from July of last year. And her question was, what are your top five favorite tools? Um, I, I think I have more than five, but the five definite go-tos are going to be, number one, my scissors. Um, I have two pair of these, and I have two different scissor fobs that I've attached to them, just so that I don't lose them or I can grab them quickly, because they are the smaller pair of scissors. Um, and they are, of course, designated strictly for my cross stitch, nothing else, not my crochet, not anything, but I have two sets of these, and each one of them has a different scissor fob on the end of them. So, there's that. Um, my second one would be, recently, would be my Thread Heaven. Um, this stuff is great because you can take it out. Oops so easily I just love it um, I usually will do like four or five needles at a time and I'll go ahead and pull it out and I'll take my thread I'm going to use this as an example put it on here and just run it through pulling it while my thumb is holding it down I'll do that twice um, and then after I have done about four or five threads I'll go ahead and put it back in its little case so nice and neatly now i found too um if you're a candle burner in your home sometimes your threads will get a little bit of uh that d soot that's in the air you can't help it it just happens um this is also great for taking that off i have found um because i thought it was kind of odd that i got these very weird gray streaks in here um and that's what had happened um i had burnt some candles i guess and um it had either discolored or i don't know what happened but anyway the thread haven't really helped on that so that's my second one um my third one is going to be my needle magnet um i keep usually i keep between 10 and 12 needles on here at all times even if i'm doing just one color and I know I'm going to use most of the strands up on whatever I have cut from my skein. Um, I'll go ahead and thread up four or five needles and then I'll just lay them on here. And I have them beside me. Um, my little case. I colored it myself. <laughs> it's just a little cute little dollar thing that I got at Michael's many, many years ago. I don't even know if they carry them anymore. But um, I took some permanent sharpie markers and colored it up a little bit it was all just black and white and but I keep everything in here um and it goes everywhere with me it's just a lot easier to carry 
Um, it's got all my extra needles and my um, my thimble and some extra thread and my hooks and just about everything's in there. And then here's my little needle case. And then I'll show you on this. I really like this. These are my little crooked needles. I love these. These are for stitching up. These are, you can see they're bent. The needle is bent. They're very sharp on the end, but I use these for whenever I'm stitching together my, the tops of my cupcakes or whatever. Um, but I keep all my bigger needles, all my darning needles, um, extra needles in here. Um, I just recently bought a pack of 100 uh, size 26 needles from Marika and from her Etsy shop. And um, so, yeah, so this is where I keep them. But that, again, that goes in the pouch. That goes in the pouch. The thread heaven goes in the pouch. Um, different ways to sign my name. I have on a little piece of paper, a little grid for when I'm cross stitching and I want to put personalize it with my name. I've got different fonts written out. Um, I keep that in my case. Oh, all right. My second, my, my, let's say I showed you this. The scissors was one. The thread heaven was the second one. My needle holder is my third one. My fourth one is my needle threader. I have five or six of these. Um, on my other set of um, scissors, I have it attached. I have my needle threader attached to that. This thing is awesome. I've had this one, I'm going to say, probably about six or seven years. I've acquired a couple more. Uh, because they are so thin and tiny, I, I end up losing them and finding them again. But there is a hole on the end of them, so you can attach it to something. And like I said, on the other end of my scissor fob, on the other one, I've got it attached to it. But on this one, I've just taken a bunch of beads and some plastic yarn or plarn that I made out of plastic bags and stitched it up and attached it. But... Yeah, these things are amazing. Um, in fact, I don't even think, yeah. See, even the the lettering has worn off. That's how old this thing is, and I've used it. You can kind of see it's gone. Um, and then I will show you, let's see, so we got one, two, three, four would be my thread heaven. Um, my Q snaps, of course, I've got three big ones there. Um, I've got about six or seven Q snaps. I think I've got six. Um, and then I'm going to come back and I'll show you um, one of my other favorite tools. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Um, for the five favorite tool tags, this is going to be, this is tool number one. Um, this is one of my favorites. It is the Stitchers. Let's see if that will focus in. Stitchers No Slip Hoop Tape. If you use a hoop or if you use, um, actually if you use Q-snaps hoops or plastic hoops or rather um, uh, wood hoops. Yes, this stuff is awesome. Now it says I paid $10.99. I did not pay $10.99. I used, this is a Hobby Lobby, I used a 40% off coupon so I got it pretty cheap. Um, and this is what it looks like. Now getting it started, it's got like a little bubbly, let me turn my light on and see if that helps. It's a little bit better. It's just not focusing the way I want it to. So, let me switch. Better. Is that better? No. Yes, focusing. Okay, see the little bumps? Um, what that is, is that's just a covering. That's all that is. What you're going to do is you're going to open up your tape and you're going to split it. Um, like I said, this, and this is the rubber side. This is the no slip rubber side. On the other side is an adhesive. And what you're going to do, you have, when you first get it started, you have to take a pin and pull it apart. But this pulls off. This is the adhesive side, and this is what you're going to put on your Q-snap. Now, when I do it on the Q-snap, I do it on the clamps um, because it, it holds it in place really good. You can put it on the Q-snap, but if you put it on the Q-snap itself, you won't be able to twist and get the tension that you need. So I recommend putting it on the inside lining of the clamp. Okay, so let's get started on this. And what you're going to do is 
you're going to lay this on the hoop. And let's see, I think it's, what size is this? This is uh, da, 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 three quarters of an inch wide. No. Da, da. It just, that tells you what type hoop. But anyway, so you lay it down like this. And then as you lay it down, you pull the plastic strip off. And it just lays in place. And all you're going to do is pull it, pull off the plastic, and push it down. Pull the plastic and push it down. And you're going to do that all the way around. I think I've used this. It's a very good investment. I have used this tape, oh gosh, maybe seven or eight times, maybe. And then it will do that. It will, it will tear off. So all you do is come back and pull it off. And get, there we go. Get that sticky side going again. And again, you just pull and stick. Pull all the way around. Like I said, this is, this is one of my favorite tools to use if you're going to use a hoop or if you want to um, secure the tension on your Q-snaps. Now, when you get towards the end right there, what I do to make it easier for the next time that I have to use this, get, oh, I don't have regular scissors. I don't want to use these. I'm going to have to. Okay, um, what I do is I will snip the tape first and lay it out. And then on here to make it easier the next time that you go to use it, cut it a little bit above on just the plastic, the yellow plastic. And then that way it won't be hard for you to pull it apart the next time you want to use it. But this is the rubber side. Underneath this plastic yellow is the tape side. So see, I just did a... What size hoop is that? I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, I still have a whole lot left. And this is like the seventh or eighth hoop that I've done. So it's a really good investment. Um, and then, like I said, this is really great because once you've got that on there, that rubber, it keeps the tension and it, you're, it won't slip. It's awesome. This is what I used before I discovered Q-snaps. Um, and I still use it to this day. In fact, I'm fixing to transfer... <laughs> transfer my Noah sub onto this, um, which is why I wanted to do this and show it to you real quick. So that is my favorite tool. So that would be one of my five picks.